then turns in its turn for guidance to that which is superior to its own nature. So the old teacher comes as the impression of the purpose and the plan itself from the most internal, internal parts of consciousness. And this becomes then the guiding principle to the alchemist from that point on. He then continues his positive growth. This is, again, participation in a universal consciousness which then becomes his instructor. Man teaches himself from within himself as far as he can go, then the universal consciousness takes over. And the universal consciousness then assists the individual to continue his growth as far as possible, and continues to do so life after life until the universal life itself is released. <coughs> So we have two distinct types of teaching, or three in fact. We have man learning from the book, which is learning from the tradition and from the environmental world around him, the book and the laboratory. We have him learning from the inspirations of his own soul, and having achieved this level and consummated it, we then have his direct participation in the creative power of the <coughs> And by means of this, consciousness then is gradually transformed into further soul power and it continues to build the soul itself until the soul becomes a vehicle or instrument sufficiently perfect, sufficiently complete, like a body, that it can be unsold or can receive into itself uh, the uh, consciousness, the personal consciousness of the individual. And by so doing, then the person becomes a living soul and has the adept experience or the adept life. And he achieves the great work. And having transformed itself from a creature of the material world to a creature of the psychic world, or the world soul. Now this does not mean that the adept necessarily disappears from humanity. But it means that his level of life within himself is on the level of enlightened soul rather than on the level of externals. That he is the master of his destiny and the captain of his soul. And that at any time he so wills, he may experience his own adept existence. Because an adept, according to alchemy, is not one all the time. He is only an adept when he wills to be one. He is only an adept when the consciousness <coughs> is required. Otherwise, he lives a very simple and normal life, a quiet life, like Elias Autista, who was unknown. But uh, the adept has available the immediate contact with internals, and is therefore in a position to call upon faculties superior to those of the average person when the need arises. This is the alchemical approach to it. But I think it is very interesting and important to realize that the chemist reaches the point where he cannot go on without calling upon archetypes. And in this become, begins his new work of proceeding as a creating chemist. And finally, through the acceptance of chemistry as a spiritual mystery of religion, and the practice of chemistry as a completely devotional art and science, the alchemist experiences the mystery of the metals. He experiences the universe as the great chemical mystery. And having so experienced it, becomes master of the elements and patterns of this chemistry. Well, our time is up, so we'll have to continue next week.